Okay, and then moving into what I'm calling the art of nursing informatics, it probably seems so, like it's just common sense to most of you. But, you know, as you know, as you're getting to, know, to getting comfortable, et cetera, with a new system, et cetera, sometimes your focus can just focus on the machines, et cetera. And then as you get more comfortable with it, you're able to multitask and attend more carefully and, and um, compassionately, et cetera, while still using that system. Well, there's a lot of times that this particular um, feeling of comfort doesn't come, and it's not usually the nurse's fault. It's the system's fault. It's the designer's fault. Again, if nurses aren't involved with putting on like real input, not just cursory input, but real input into the design of that system, oftentimes that system's not going to meet their needs. And I think every institution's different. And of course, there's commonalities across um, sectors, et cetera, and there has been talk for years to get all of the regions to use the same system, et cetera, but that's, that still hasn't occurred. So that there's uh, a lot of times if nurses move from hospital to hospital, they have to learn different systems. Or even within the one hospital, they'll try a system for a few years going, oh, that one didn't work too great, let's try this one. And so then all over again, you have to get used to it. The problem is, though, that it's not being designed from the inside out, and that's really important. You need to tell them what you need. And again, in order to feel that you have the knowledge and the voice to be able to tell, say, IT, admin, et cetera, um, how they should design the system, you need some knowledge. So it's, it's, um, it's kind of a catch-22. It's difficult to get the knowledge on how to talk about system design, et cetera, and then it's also uh, really difficult to work with the systems that are designed. So by developing some competency, though, though and developing a voice and saying, okay, hey, I want to be involved in this, um, I would consider that a proactive approach, and I think most of you would agree that that is a proactive approach to using informatics within practice. Okay, the next couple of screens bring up some questions that I just wanted you to think about. Because as you're probably aware, you've probably heard of telenursing, where people can be cared for either via a computer monitor or a television screen, uh, we have the classic where it was a telephone. We've used um, that particular type of telenursing for a long time, but now we have this added visual as well as the auditory, and it's in real time most of the time, so that you're looking at the person at, at that actual time of day. It's not a recording, etc., and you're trying to assess. But you have, we have to think critically about this. How are we able to still convey that compassion and the caring um, that personal touch approach while using, looking at a person through a screen. And I think that's something that we really need to consider and keep in mind because more, as I think as we move into the future, this type of um, care will become more and more common in British Columbia, especially in remote areas. So how do we use it? And how do we embody our own presence? I think that's, to me, is a really interesting question. How do we convey to the person that we care. And I think that's part, again, of the art of nursing. As you know, when you walk into a client's room, there's something about you that just puts them at ease, usually, right? Unless you're having a really awful day. But most of us have, have learned to be very therapeutic with our own being as we're approaching our clients, etc. So I'm able to, do, to be able to use the gadgets, et cetera. I know nurses that work in ICU, um, CCU, et cetera, cardiac care are really good at working with the gadgets and uh, also giving really good care. But as we're doing that, again, how do we make our presence known? And again, I, I give you the conjecture of using telenursing where you're not actually in the room with that person. They're maybe in their living room and you're at a nursing station or uh, uh, it could be a hospital room, et cetera but uh, you are far away from them. So how do we uh, show that kind of aesthetic care and show our presence? And I think though, here's just an, a visual example of a lady at home talking to a nurse in her living room and then on the right side, a nurse in a clinic looking at uh, an x-ray, et cetera, and then talking to the client as well and interpreting that to them. 
And again, more and more as we have nurse practitioners joining the workforce, etc., we'll see a lot more of this sort of solitary diagnosing and nursing care using telenursing um, often at times. So I leave you with the art part of this um, talk by looking at just different ways, different configurations that nurses do work with technology while providing nursing care or planning nursing care, or managing nursing care, etc. So as you know, you may have used most of these or some of these. There are handheld devices that you might use, palm um, pilots, like some people use their iPhone, etc., or their iTouch um, if you've got particular software. There's desktops, the classic ones are at the nursing station, some might be in the halls, they might be in certain rooms, etc., or they could be right at the bedside. There's all different ways that you can use technology, uh, but all of these also need to be used in a way that shows the art and the science. Um, other, other ways, as I mentioned, is the electronic health record. And again, we're, we're really at a rudimentary level with that right now. But that's, there's big plans for that to come out, and it's going to be quite comprehensive and potentially quite intrusive. Um, telenursing and then e-health, and I'm going to talk about e-health in a minute, um, but also client education systems are becoming more and more computerized, which I think can be quite valuable if done right. Okay, so just starting into the next section where I'm looking at nursing informatics and voice. Um, looking again that, um, try to think of nursing informatics in, in a more umbrella term to go beyond even using the, the new medium such as the internet, etc. But that informatics encompasses any use of technology. So that can be, as I mentioned, right from a thermometer right up to, it, um, to using a huge computer system. Um, now, this is one e example group, as I mentioned. Now, I thought I was going to be able to click through to the web, but I don't think I can with this setup. Um, so I'll just have to tell you, this is where um, the CNIA website is. This is one group that um, started in 2003 that is trying to become quite a viable voice for nursing informatics in Canada. As I mentioned, they're an associate group of the Canadian Nurses Association and are working with different organizations to make sure that nurses are considered as they're designing, say, the electronic health record, etc. So this is one way that if you were interested in nursing informatics, you could also have a voice by becoming a member, etc. So just to let you know that it's there. But I wanted to look at an example of e-health um, as one way for you to think about how you could have voice while using nursing informatics. So basically the way I'm defining e-health, now there are defi different definitions of this. I'm defining it in a, in a more of a, a grassroots sort of way. Um, as you know, there's this budding phenomena where a lot of clients are becoming quite knowledgeable about their health and their health issues on their own. And this particular phenomenon is sometimes distressing to caregivers. I don't know how you, if you've faced that um, feeling at all yourself, but sometimes people don't like it that people come knowing a lot about their condition, etc. And then other times, um, and it's usually certain um, members of the healthcare team, not so much nurses that don't like it. Quite often, um, nurses are quite surprised, et cetera, on how much people know. So this is what I'm defining as e-health, as people taking the initiative to not only look for information, et cetera, but to rally support um, for themselves with, when they have a particular health condition. And then looking at where do the nurses fit into this? So here's just a little case scenario for you to consider. And this is quite a, a common one. I'll just let you read it for a sec. It's quite common. You know. um, this particular woman is 43. She's kind of at the prime of her life. She's got her own business. 
and she's just been diagnosed. She's probably had aches and pains and all kinds of problems for a while, but, but just, just was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And she's not happy with the care she's given. She doesn't think it's enough, so she starts to widen her availability of care and support, et cetera, and decides herself to initiate a support group using the internet. So again, I don't know what your particular experience with this sort of phenomena is, but it's quite a common one, and it's a growing one, and I personally think it should be supported. But obviously, as you know, not all sources on the internet are reliable. So I think that's one of the areas where it's nurses' responsibility to be involved. So here's some questions to ask yourself, considering again Janet's scenario. What roles should nurses adopt to support her in her endeavor? And again, you can think of, there's a lot of ethical issues here um, that's, that'll probably come right to mind as you consider that question. Also, how could nurses offer this new community of clients? Uh, what could they offer them and, and help them to organize themselves? And then what are the ethical issues? I think one of the biggest issues that comes up a lot of times is uh, giving the advice and giving the advice without um, sanction from from the healthcare system itself, particularly physicians. I think nurses need to be more confident in the advice and have some room to give the advice that could be really helpful to this particular client and other clients. Um, nurses have a lot of knowledge that they could be adding to this whole budding phenomenon to help ensure that what is available on the internet is safe, is carefully thought out and carefully measured and carefully given to the clients, etc. So all of these roles are ways that nurses could be given a voice to help the clients directly. And this is beyond, you know, as you can see, in hospital care, etc. This touches on population health, this could touch on social determinants of health, primary health care, etc. That there are different ways nurses could fit into the system. As well, the next one is the next layer that I see that where nurses' knowledge is just not being tapped at all is client education. You're just not given the time. If you're in practice, you're given very little time to give client education, etc. that it should be built into the workload. This should be a major part of nursing practice. This is the way that you're going to help the client to actually manage their lives, etc. once they leave the hospital or if they're not in the hospital within um, whatever practice area you're in. That it's really important that we have time to truly facilitate partnership with our clients. And this is afforded at some levels, particularly in the community, if you've got the time, if you're not being run ragged, running from one house to the other, etc., or one unit from the other. Um, but again, in our system, it's get more done. As one, mentioned, one person mentioned this morning about the assembly line sort of way that care is going. And it's really unfortunate the whole business model method that is controlling the healthcare system needs to change. And I personally could see nursing informatics as being a tool to help empower nurses to raise. So again, you're the biggest group that there is in the healthcare system. If there's enough of a group together, people have to listen. And again, I think this particular organization that's sponsoring this um, um, conference is doing a really great job at that. So those are just two, two of the areas that we could take more control of. Which then leads to action. And basically, this is a quote from the Canadian Nurses Association that's quite lofty. If you think about it, do you have time to do all this? But this is like what we're expected um, to be able to do, to, um, to be involved with helping to improve the environment, to fight pollution, homelessness, to up uphold human rights, etc. This is actually all very much part of nursing. But again, if you're working in the modernist system, you run ragged. You, like I, can re I can still remember running down that hall to give all those 15 IV meds to all my post-surgical patients yeah, before night shift was over. And it's just like, yeah, great, I would love to do this, but how? And obviously that needs to be worked into the system. We need to demand that it be part of health care. If we're supposed to be giving primary health care, which is a joke, really, we are supposed to, by this time, 50% of Canada is supposed to be enjoying primary health care. We're not anywhere close to that. 
we're not really looking at population health. We say we are, but we're not really looking at it strategically enough. So there's all different ways that we need to become active. This is just a rundown of kind of the old list of social determinants of health. I see Dennis Raphael just came out with a new publication that has expanded the list, but you get the this general drift that the social determinants of health are supposed to be one of our main foci in nursing. But again, do we get to, to work with this? You barely have time. Again, um, I think Judith was mentioning when your people are being discharged, that you could be collecting information and it seems to be helping to um, give the person well-rounded care, but really it's just helping the assembly line to get that person discharged so that bed can be filled by someone else. But that is really an important piece of nursing that we really should be having the follow-up. So all of that needs to be worked in and, and how we're going to do that and find the time and find the money um, is something that is, we, we really need to tackle. Again, another lofty sentiment. This one is by the World Health Organization. And I think it's a really important question. What narrative will capture the imaginations, feelings, intellect, and will of political decision makers and the broader public and inspire them to action? And I personally think the answer is nurses. That together, the heart, the mind, the soul of all of us together could move those political decision makers, et cetera. You know, and I've, as I've heard um, Deborah um, on recordings say many times that there is money. We know there is money. There is enough. There is enough food in the world. There is enough money in the world, et cetera. It's just not being spent properly. It's not distributed properly. Uh, and we are one group that could um, speak up and say, enough. This, is, this has to be more equal. Now this particular site is a site that I started um, three years ago. It's called Nurse Activism. And on this site, um, some of the pieces have been developed by some of my students. As I mentioned, one of the courses I teach is called Nurses Influencing Change. And within that course, um, coupled with a practice course that goes along with it where they actually work with another faculty member in a, on a change project, these students learn to become change agents, activists, advocates, etc. So they do get really good leadership skills on how to catalyst change, and change that's driven by the person themselves, and grassroots sort of driven, not just change that's imposed upon them, etc. So this particular um, site, which I thought I was going to be able to show you and, and click through, um, has a number of different elements to it that are hopefully helpful to nurses to help um, you to think of ways of, that you could become activists on, depending on what kind of um, cause, etc., that you're interested in. Here's just a little bit of an information about it. So it is evolving. It's just starting slowly to grow. Every semester or so, there's usually one or two students who have work that would suit the site so that it's put on the site, etc. And also, um, some of the work has, uh, I've written myself, obviously, and it's just to give uh, support, models, guidelines, etc., and resources to help nurses to become activists for whatever issue they, they find motivated to get involved in. 